What is love? Baby, don't hurt me. Don't hurt me. No more. What's happening, YouTube? Pastor JB here. Uh, love Jones Part 3. <laughs> I'm sorry that I keep digging into this subject, but I really need to get this message of love out because in this in this country, when you can find pain and hurt and 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 disparaging remarks and comments uh, on your life at every turn, you really don't need to hear it all the time from everyone. So you got to find something that's that's going to be soothing to the pain that you perceive. Um, in my last video, I gave you some Greek definitions of, uh, well, Greek words for love. And, you know, I'm sure you're like me. It's all Greek to me, you know. <laughs> but I promised to tell you a story about uh, love and how, how to know when you're receiving the love from God versus the love from man. Um, you all remember the, the video I made about my brothers. My brothers uh, mean the world to me. They, you know, they connect me to family. They can connect me to uh, everything that's important in my life. Um, I lost two brothers. One to suicide. Uh, Jacques the Marine, I lost him to suicide. And Julius, I lost him to uh, kidney failure, renal failure actually. Um, he had a septic infection from the dialysis. The, the veins are not capable of standing up to that procedure for a long period of time. And uh, basically the veins begin to deteriorate and as they deteriorate and break down they, they poison the bloodstreams, you know, so that's what happened to him. So the only brother I have left is my brother John. But there's a problem because my brother John has a drug problem. Now, I'm not afraid or ashamed to tell you that my brother has a drug problem because, as Bernie Mac would say, some of your family members are, you know, messed up like that too. Um, he has had this problem for quite some time. It's, it's been in and out of his life uh, for really as long as I can remember, way back to the 80s. Um, we have taken him to different counselors and to different places to seek help and we've done everything that we, we could do in order to try to get him uh, get him off these drugs. So we went to one, one guy and he told my mother, he says, Miss Jenkins, you have got to exhibit tough love to your son. And so my mother was like, okay, so explain to me what this tough love is. Um, the guy said, pack his stuff up and throw him out in the street. Okay. But won't that, like, really upset him and make him, uh, you know, run and, and just get even more and more upset with us and go deeper into the to the drug culture? And the guy says, no, no. When you, you, you give him the tough love, you kick him out in the street, he's going to realize everything that he's losing. And, 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 and he's going to come back to it. He's going to revert back to it because, you know, he doesn't, he want, he's not going to want to lose everything. So my mom and I, we sat and talked about this tough love thing. This was back in the mid-90s. And um, we made up our mind that we were going to do this. At this time, Jacques was still with us. Julius was gone. Jacques was still with us. So we told John, we said, okay, man. You got to pack up and leave. You got to get out of mom's house because you're dragging her down. Tough love. Tough love. We love you, but it's tough. But um, he looked at my mother and he said, can I stay just one more night? And we knew that that one more night meant that he was going to like steal everything she had so that he could get as much as he could. So we told him, no, you have to go. So he walked out of the house and when he got out, he threw three bricks through the window. My brother Jacques and I chased him down the street. We we're trying to catch him to see what the heck is going on with his head. And we didn't see him. He was just, he was gone. He ran. And um, we didn't see him for probably about six months after that. Tough love. Waiting for him to come back and say he was sorry. Come back and find an epiphany or a revelation and say, you know what, I'm sorry. I want to be back in the family. I'm going to leave these drugs alone. Waiting, just waiting. Six months went by. And um, one night my mother was driving down the street and it was raining. And she said, this is her exact word, she says the biggest pain in her life was to ride down the street and see a figure walking down the street soaking wet and then realize that was your son. She told him, meet me at the house. No tough love here. She, she, she broke down. She's like, 
meet me at the house. She's going to show him a parent, a parental love. So John showed up to the house, and she called us, and we came over there, and we saw him for the first time in six months, and he was probably about 40 pounds lighter than he was when he saw him, and his teeth, his gums were recessing, you know, they were going back, and his teeth were, you know, not looking real good, and the, he didn't look good at all, he had the same clothes on that, that he had on when he, when he ran off, where have you been, don't worry about it, are you okay, uh, but the moral of the story is we brought him back in, we ended the tough love campaign, and we began to love on him, and we began to show him kindness and guidance. And eventually, you know, he ended up coming to church, and he joined the church. He got his life together. He got clean, um, and he stayed clean. And he didn't have any problems for about four years. But we loved him through that through that situation. He didn't steal from us anymore. He didn't, he wasn't breaking stuff for about four years. We loved him. We loved him good. And he decided he wanted to move out. He was like, okay, mama, move on out of your house. I got a job, blah, blah, blah. He moved out, moved into an apartment, got around the wrong people, got caught up in it again. So we're still loving him. He's still dealing with the same kind of stuff. But when we tried the tough love, we almost lost him. We almost lost him. If mom hadn't been driving down the street that night in the rain, no telling what could have happened with him. So sometimes that whole tough love piece, you have to re-examine it. It's good in some instances, but it's not good for everything and everyone. It should not be the only answer when it comes down to getting people to understand that you love them and see a point of view. So I hope this has been helpful for you guys. I hope you have been able to understand something about love and Christian love. And, you know, that's all it's about. It has nothing to do with anybody else on YouTube. It has nothing to do with anything, but just begin to love one another. The world is, is ripping you to shreds as it is with the economy and with uh, with all of the different things that are going on, your job, your your finances, the gas at the pump. You, you, you've got enough drama. You've got enough stuff ripping at you. You don't need me as a Christian saying, Argh. you need me saying, here's a hand of love. So, God bless you all. This has been Pastor Javis. Jav God bless you all. This has been Pastor Javid. Love Jones Part 3. This is the end of the love series. I'm going to be jumping into something new. Take care.